All right, good evening, Source Nation, and welcome to SRN Live Television. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore, author Kimberly McLemore, and thank you for tuning in tonight to my show, The Author's Corner. Tonight, we have another amazing show in store for you. So before we get started, though, and before I bring on my guest, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. All right. First of all, as you know, like I said, I am the author. I am the author of How to Be a Success by Just Being You and the memoir, Deception of the Heart, A Real Look into Domestic Violence. So as you can see, I got my couple of little books here that I always like to show every now and then on the show. Also, I am the founder and CEO of the Women's Small Business Initiative, uh, LLC, the host of the podcast, Your Resource for Success, uh, which is on uh, iHeartRadio and Spotify. And I am the founder of the author and uh, author Kimberly M. McLemore, LLC. And of course, I am the host of this new show, uh, the radio TV show called The Author's Corner. And let me just talk a little bit about why I chose this platform. I chose this platform because we have so many authors throughout our community and outside of our community. And I wanted to have a platform where people can actually share their information about their books, um, their upcoming events, any type of speaking games. Of course, the biggest thing we want to know is how can we get a copy of that book? So let me tell you a little bit about our special guest author, Laquel Farley. Laquel is a mother of seven. She is a coach. She is a motivational speaker, a strategist, specialist, and the COO of Laquel Life Intervention LLC, which is located in Atlanta, Georgia. Laquel's journey was inspired by her everyday life experience from divorce, domestic violence, homelessness, and sexual assault. Her inspiration and desire for writing this book have been her son ensuring that young adults are given the opportunity to develop the first steps into adulthood and financial literacy. So without further ado, please help me welcome my special guest, Laquel Farley. How you doing, Laquel? Hi, how are you? I am great. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. We have known each other off now probably for more than a year now because we uh, met through my other show, of course. Correct. And I'm just excited to hear about you and, and hear about your book. So before we go into the book, though, could you please tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself? Well, as you said, I am the mother of seven. Um, I love what I do. I do a lot of um, life coaching and marriage counseling. Um, I also work with our young adults, ages 19 to 27, um, trying to get them on the right path of life. So um, majority of my day has been in my office in Atlanta, um, trying to help our youth get to the next step. All right. So with that, yeah, that that's amazing. But what I wanted to find out a little bit more about is how you decided to start writing this book. I know that I, mean, I talked a little bit in my introduction of you. I talk about the fact that you had your son as inspiration. But I know we've talked a few times here or there in reference to what is going on in the communities and what's going on with our kids and why it's important to do the things that we need to do to get them prepared. So tell me more about what you're doing as far as this book and how you're utilizing it in every day and then of course with your business. Okay, well, uh, like you said, um, I initially wrote I'm Grown, Now What um, book in 2016 in honor of my son, um, actually because it, unfortunately in our school system, um, they are letting our youth down. And what I mean by that is a lot of times they are not prepared for what is the next step after you graduate. So they are so um, hooked on trying to get you ready to go to college, but not every child is prepared to go to college. So a mm -hmm. lot of times they put them in the world, so they go out and get a job and they have not a clue of what's next. Um, so initially, when I initially wrote the book, it was uh, designed for special need kids. As I uh, continued to get involved in the book, I did a DVD, I did a teacher's edition, done quite a um, few versions, including a Spanish version um, mm -hmm. of the book, so that everyone would have the opportunity to view my book and learn from it. Um, I also have taught classes on it as well. And... Um, I tried, to, of course, to um, have different events 
in the neighborhood um, and conferences to help our young adults. When I do have these conferences, I do also help them with finding a job because most of the time okay. when your kids come out um, of high school, they have not a clue of what to do, such as filling out a resume, how to get an apartment, how to apply for a car. Um, I remember mm -hmm. at one of the conferences, we had a young gentleman that was like, oh, I need to go get a car first. And I was like, okay. And then he says, I said, so do you have proof of income? And he says, no. I said, you need to get a job first. Exactly. But a lot of times kids will overlook that because they look at the right now. I want this now. Mm -hmm. But our job and sometimes our you know, parents in the community does not have time to teach them because a lot of them don't know I also. So um, my job at, you know, what I've been doing all my life is to back up. Let's start from the basic steps, teach you the um, first steps into adulthood and financial literacy. So not only am I teaching you about um, the basic skills of life, I'm also mm -hmm. teaching you your first steps into financial literacy, like how to budget, um, how to um, set aside for your uh, getting an apartment or a car or how to deal with child support issues. So a lot of those issues that are everyday issue to you and I, again, when they're just come out of high school or even college, uh, most kids don't understand what to do next. And yeah, you are absolutely right. And, you know, listening to what you're saying, you're right. Uh, the kids today are not educated in the things that I can say that we were taught coming up. And I think a big part of it is because of the technology that we have today. Nobody thinks with their head anymore. But also the other thing of it, like you said, that a lot of children don't always come from homes where the parents are equipped and can teach them about those simple, basic things that we need to have. Whether you're coming up out of high school or coming into college, I think that all this should be actually taught at a much earlier age because society is moving so much quicker. So in your in your program um, that you have, you 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 have a book and we'll, we'll pull up the book in a little bit, but because I wanted you to kind of go through some of the things in that. But I guess some of the basic steps that you're talking about. So when you have a client that comes in, do you actually go to the schools to talk to the, to these individuals, these children to, to help them or do they actually come to you? How does that process work? They actually come to me. I've um, held conferences for the last two years um, mm -hmm. so that they have an opportunity because unfortunately you have so many restricted guidelines if you try to go into the system. So a lot of times you can't say certain things, which you know that sometimes mm -hmm. you have to get into it. Um, and, and, and that do calls for, you know, of course our school system is like, no, you can't say that. You can't do right. that. You can't do that. So um, rather than go through the issues with the school systems, I have a conference where all of them are able to come to me. Right. Which which makes sense. It makes sense because, like you said, you can't say what you really need to say. And then I think it loses the real effect of what it is you're trying to portray to these kids, because it's the reality is they you have to be real with them. You know, Correct. all this sugar coating that's going on in our system. And I think that's part of the reason why kids don't learn the way that they should learn. That is absolutely correct. I agree with you 100% in regards to that because a lot of times they're missing the small clues because we're trying to be proper prim. And it's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me in wrong. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, some kids need to be taught from their own levels um, for where they are. So rather than I'm trying to, you know, say the political correct word and they might still be like, huh, what? Excuse me. I don't understand. So you right. meet them at where they are in the streets, what they hear in the streets. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, I guess the other thing is that you're educating these children. How does it how does what they learn um, refer back to the to the families, the parents Are there any type of education tools that you provide to those parents that have not been educated enough to understand what their children are even actually learning and talking about? Yes. As I said before, I make this um, available to the community. So I allow the parents and the kids to come to the conferences as well. Um, mm -hmm. I do like discussing with the parents is because a lot of times you will find they have not a clue when it comes to finances. I mean, you must admit everybody has everyday life activities going on. And unfortunately, because of the economy and the way the world is right now, we do have 
um, a lot of parents that have not a clue about finances. That's why you have an alarming rate of bankruptcies going on now because, I mean, unfortunately, everybody gets into rut sometimes. So I mean, right. you have to teach them. And even with that being said, um, even if they happen to file bankruptcies or whatever the case is, they don't know how to start over even from that because they go back in that same cycle. Same, and it's in exactly. Cycle. Exactly. They, you know, they get out of it and then they go right mm -hmm. back into debt. Well, you got to learn. Don't live above your mean. Um, That's right. Stay where, where you have. If you see something, you might I can't get it right now. You might need to wait. And a lot of time, everything is about the right now. I mean, everything has got to be expeditiously it's, and it has yep. to be done now. So, yeah. yep. Absolutely. We live in a world of instant gratification. You know, I mean, just like even having shows like this, I mean, that's wonderful. We have the opportunity to have this type of technology, but at the same token, everything is based on right now. You know, nobody wants to sit back and wait or earn it. It all has to be, I need this today and how am I going to get it? And then they'll look up and realize that everything that you uh, that they're trying to get, they're just not prepared for and they're not ready for. And, you know, I love what you're doing because we, we live in a society where if they can't pick up that, that computer on their or their calculator on their uh, phones, people can't even do basic calculation of, of adding and subtracting anymore. Correct. You know, so if you can't do that, how is it that you can go out here, like you said, and run the world, so to speak, and and buy a car or buy a new home? And 90% of the time, they're probably not even thinking about those things. They're thinking about all the things that they really don't need um, when it comes to uh, these everyday things. And I think it's what you're talking about is, is even something that we hear about from back in 2008 when we had the crash, you know, everybody was living outside their means and there's all these predators out here that were taking advantage of these people who did not understand what it meant to live outside their means. They're just living. And, and, right. and so now they're starting over. So talk to me a little bit more now, I guess we can kind of dive into the book because I want to talk about some of the chapters and I, I know you have your book with me. So how about we go into some of that? Okay. As you were talking about, the book is I'm Grown, Now What? Um, this is actually just the book itself. As I said before, it I do have a workbook and I do have um, the teacher's edition. I do have the Spanish edition and mm -hmm. as well as I have an audio version. Um, like I said, this was originally designed for special need children. Um, that they can actually listen and go along with it. Um, a lot of the chapters that um, that is in my book that I go over is like writing a resume. Okay. Um, it teaches them step by step about writing a resume, um, getting started, understanding how to open a bank account and running and operating your checkbook. Mm -hmm. um, understanding banking, which is most essential in anything we do. And what I mean by understanding banking, um, a lot of the personal that we had growing up is going away. So everything exactly. that we want you to do is on a cell phone yep. or we want you to go to a computer and press the little buttons. Mm -hmm. Nothing is personable anymore. So they're taking that away. Right. And there are instances where you have to go into a bank and actually interact with a human and we're <laughs> losing that connection. Yes. No, we're, that we're not day, losing. Like, We've already lost it. <laughs> right. But, but the key is we're not losing that. We have already lost that. And, yes. and that's the reason why it's so hard for kids to communicate, even with us. You know, just the basic, like you said, everyday questions. And I'm sitting here listening to how you're how you're going through the process that we actually kind of take for granted because that's the world that we came from. And I'm thinking about how even people who are in business today, they want to come and open up a business, but they can't even tell you what their actual budget is. They need to come and take your class. Because yes. those basic things are, are how you start. You're absolutely right. We talk about exploring independence. At some point in life, your mom and dad want to kick you out. But they just don't want to kick you out with not having the essentials, basic foundation. So we explore about getting you prepared to be independent. Like, what does that look like? Going out to look for an apartment. Right. Um, understanding what you need to be able to get an apartment. A lot of times, and I had this happen to one of my son's friends. Um, he was excited. I mean, she was excited. They was about to graduate told mom, I'm going out and I'm going to get an apartment. She had just been working her job for a little bit more than three months. Mm -hmm. She came out and, and went and paid her 250 deposit. 
And the next day they called and told us she was declined. She came to my house, she was crying, and she asked, why did I get denied? Well, two factors. You had no credit and you didn't you haven't been on your job long enough. So right. again, her mother did not uh, uh, set her up for the right path. She actually set her up for, for failure. Failure. But then when I mm -hmm. asked the mom about it, the first thing she said was. Um, I had to go through it, so she would too. Well, I told her, no, that was wrong. <laughs> you should want better for your children. Exactly. And she said, I had to find out through trial and error. Well, no, you, we don't have to do that. So I right. became more committed even to to um, helping our youth. I mean, we even go as far as budgeting, paying bills. We talk about your credit score, dealing with overwhelming debt. Because, again, when you come out um, of high school, most of the time, credit card companies will be knocking at your door trying Absolutely. to get you to apply for credit cards. And that's a trap. I mean, understand, people really understood how credit actually worked and yep. then how it evolves and what makes it ticked in today's world and what it goes toward, even when you're buying a house, mm -hmm. your future life down the road. Um, they really would pay attention. But that's the one subject, which is credit. Everybody danced around, hate to deal with it. And the next subject is debt. When you right. get in it, how do you get out of get it? Out of Instead it. Of you just mm -hmm. tuck your tail and run away. Deal with the situation because you'll actually be surprised. A lot of people don't realize that when you get um, credit cards, they have insurance. So if you become an employee, you call them up yep. and tell them you, you're unemployed and you have insurance that's backing you when you cannot pay. But exactly. a lot of times they, they, what they do, now they block the, the numbers out the phone so you can't reach them. Right. Like the debt is just going to go away and it doesn't. And it doesn't. And all it does is yeah. make it worse. It makes it worse. But yes. before, we, before yes. we go on, I just want to reintroduce the show, Source Nation. If you're just tuning in live, you are missing a Heck of a great conversation tonight. We have um, here on the author's corner, my special guest, author Lakel Farley, is talking about her amazing, amazing book. Uh, and, and we're talking about finances. And Lakel, again, tell us the name of your book. It's called I'm Grown Now What? All right. So let's continue to have this conversation because I'm sitting here and I'm just like biting at the bits, thinking to myself, all the things that you're talking about when it comes to the, the thought process of the, the family, like I say, I always tell people everything 90% of the times we all know starts within the home and to sit here and think that somebody would tell a, a child, well, you know, I've been through all the rough stuff. You got to go through that patch. That That's craziness. But we know we hear this every day. We realize yeah. that people have that generational cycle that continues to get worse. And, you know, each, like you said, each generation is supposed to get better, not worse. So the basic things that you're talking about that we see every day, uh, like I said, I see it just in business because most people don't even take those basic steps of understanding what their credit reports are, you know, knowing how to apply for certain things, but then yet still they all want to jump into a business environment. And so you're right. It's amazing how when kids are going to school, these are things that we learn coming up, but nobody is actually learning that now because guess what? Everybody says, oh, well, you can use your technology. That'll give you all the answers. They want to use Google as the new way of teaching and that's not and that is not the appropriate way because like you said eventually you do have to talk to a human being and what are you going to say so I'm, I'm loving this conversation so what you know you can go back and jump into what you were talking about and um talk about some other specific things that you have in your book what was your question again um so you can go ahead and finish talking what you were talking about previous um but talk about some other specific things that you have within your book um, also in the book that a lot of people don't realize is presentation. Um, when you get ready to go on a job, I see this all the time. When I was writing this book, I almost was in tears. I, um, a friend of mine's work at a um, corporate uh, job and it was a restaurant job. And at the time he was doing interviews for mm -hmm. um, hiring it for servers and um, bus boys and stuff like that. Well, um, as I was taking notes and, and I was not where they can, you know, really tell I was paying attention. I watched the people that were coming in and you'd be surprised. A lot of them were coming in with blue jeans and t-shirts. 
Right. Well, that's not appropriate if you want a job. And that thought they they thought it was cool. Like they had a white t-shirts and pair of jeans and a pair mm -hmm. of tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. No resume whatsoever in sight. Um, coming in hair is just all kind of ways. And then I'm saying, wow, you really want a job and you come like this. But the interviews was less than two minutes. And the manager didn't say anything. So it kept progressing along and mm -hmm. A young lady, um, I don't know what moved me to talk to her, but she came in. She had on an ancient mama little scarf thing and mm. had a blue jean shirt and a pair of blue jeans and a pair of tennis shoes on. And she sat down in front of the manager. The manager talked to her. The interview was less than two minutes. I stopped. I was eating at the time. I stopped. Right. And I asked him, I said, not meaning to intrude, because again, I was privy to the interview being watched because this is what I was using in the book so I can make some references to it. Right. I said, off the record, why did you finish this interview in less than two minutes? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I can't say off the record. So he said, but I mean, on the record, I can't say off the record. So we went outside. So that way we wasn't inside the establishment and he could actually take his breaks. So what he does out of sight of that establishment actually would get him in trouble. He right outside and he told me specifically that the reason why he cut the interview off was because of the way she was dressed and the fact that she didn't have a resume so i asked the young lady i said well ma'am i said do you have a resume and do you have proper interview clothes mm -hmm. and she asked me said what is interview clothes and i said you know like a nice white shirt maybe a dress right or a skirt or a pair of slacks or something to that nature so I asked him, I said, if she goes home and change clothes and dress appropriately and bring her, her resume back, would you give her a second chance at the interview? Mm -hmm. Took her about 40 minutes. Me and him went back inside and we kept um, talking and we got more into the book and the reason why I wanted to, to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and she came back, did the second interview, was great. So wow. on her resume, she was very qualified. In fact, he made her assistant manager. Um, so when I came back the next time, I had left because they still was talking. And I wanted her mm -hmm. to you know, get all the details that she needs. So the next time I came back in the restaurant, I came back and she saw me. And she ran up to me and she hugged me. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, because it was a few months, did not think anything about it. Right. And she said, I just want to tell you thank you. She said, because if you had not correct me, I wouldn't have known why I did not get this job. She said, now that I understand mm -hmm. that if I want to be successful, I got to dress for success too. Exactly. And a lot of our kids don't do that. They mm -hmm. think that I can just go. I mean, I've seen kids come go to an interview with shorts and a, um, a polo shirt on. And I'm yep. talking about with the polo symbol and everything. Right, and right. I'm like, really? I would yeah. not even hire you for my company. So, yeah. Right. Well, and, and a big part is because we, we also live in a society that says that, oh, business casual is casual. People don't understand even what the word casual or business casual means. Correct. They, they take Correct. it to the extremes. And the sad part about it is that even our educators today, not all of them, but a lot of them in these high school levels and below, they are dressing like the kids are because they want to be compatible. They want to make sure that everybody doesn't feel that that, oh, well, you know, there's this authority figure standing up here. Well, that that's that's the way it should be. It should be that you are the authority figure. You are supposed to stand out so that these kids understand this is how you look. This is the way things should be done. And that's part of the reason why a lot of these young people come into these environments and don't have a clue how they're supposed to be dressed. And I'm sitting here, right. I, I was trying not to open my mouth up and all I'm thinking to myself, wow, you really think it's okay to come here thinking, oh, you can do this interview, not have a resume, have on a scarf on your head. I mean, it's it's really kind of sad to think that in this day and age, that it seems like our children are 10 steps backwards versus being 10 steps forward with all the things that have been done and provided that, you know, when people didn't have the opportunities, they were begging to be able to walk into a room and be accepted just for their background and their education. And of course, be accepted as, as a proud man or a woman and how they dressed. That was that was a huge piece. And today, that, that we don't see that proudness as, as often as we should. No, we don't see any. We not at like you said we should. I feel sometimes like the pride has left. Um, 
back in the day, you had pride. When you walk into a company, you wanted them to know who you were, what you stood for, integrity. They exactly. don't teach anything. I had another guy that was um, working on my car a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he told me, he said, I'm the only one here. He said, it's going to be a minute, but it might be a day or so before I get to your car. And I was like, why? Why don't you have any help? He said, well, I keep hiring people. Mm -hmm. But every time I keep hiring, they come to work when they feel like it. I said, excuse me. <laughs> He's like, I hired this one one gentleman, and oh my if gosh. start time was at nine, he comes mm -hmm. at noon and says, oh, well, this is what time I want to come in. I'm like, excuse me? But again, if Attitude. you ever pay attention, have you noticed, like, they're sending you emails in regards to how corporate world, you have to, be, you know, um, yep. you have to take in consideration their feelings. Like, you can't just... Um, fire someone you have to you know they have to go through this emotional process mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, every day I hear my mom in my ear saying you know we will become wiser but yet weaker and I used to wonder about mm -hmm. that and I said oh no we got the computer age is coming around yes they are making us weak I mean even as far as we go to dinner and the whole time everybody's doing this I mean the restaurant you can look and, and, and even the kids they're not socializing. We're losing social skills yes, yep. and how to communicate with each other because they're not even willing to take the cell phone down. Really? We got to mm -hmm. eat with the cell phone. We're watching the video games on the cell phone. We're doing everything with a cell phone or a tablet. Yep. And I mean, we're kind of losing it. Yeah, that, I, I, like I said, I don't believe we're kind of losing. I think we're already pretty much there. And now we're yeah, trying to yeah. turn the table. But like we said earlier, it's really based on what goes on in the environment of our own homes. And 90% of the time, uh, you know, people, I think today use the, the cell phones and tablets, like some of the parents, when they don't want to be bothered. It's like, okay, well, here's your babysitting tool. Just go right on ahead and, and play with that or listen to that because I don't have time to deal with you. And that's the problem today. Like there's no more family time. There's no more, you know, trying to uh, sit down and actually have a conversation and talk about the things that they should be talking about instead of doing this, you know, oh, I got to, you know, type in this or type in that. So it, it, it is, the world has definitely changed and it's definitely up to the, our parents, I think, and the families to, to get it together. But like I said, I'm so thankful for people like you who do really care and understand that, you know, just looking at your own child made you realize, you know what, I'm not going to have my child out here being unprepared in the world that he's getting ready to go to go and go through in life. So, you know, it, it's, it's amazing and on to some degree, it's kind of a shame we have to have these type of basic programs available that because this to me is more of everyday life. But very thankful that you're around to, to do this because it is absolutely needed. You actually need to be all around the country talking about this. You really do. Yes, 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 yes. But I do. Um, yeah, you do. But OK. But, you know, we're getting close in the show. And before we get to the end, like how I really want you to tell the people how they can get a hold of you and where can they get your books? And if you have any engagements coming, please let us know. Okay. Um, you can get me at lakel.com. That's L-A-K-E-L.com. Um, or uh, And you can buy the book on the website. It is listed on the website as well. Okay. And you're on all social media platforms, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I am on all the social media platforms. Um, you can find me at... Um, either LaKell.com or mm -hmm. LaKell Life Interventions, um, uh, or you know, I think it's Twitter. I'm on um, I am LaKell.com, so you should be able to find me every which way as possible. Awesome. <laughs> Well, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the show tonight. It has been a fantastic conversation. You know, definitely something that's necessary and needs to be discussed. And, you know, Source Nation audience, if you have not learned anything today or tonight from this conversation, go back and re-listen to what we're talking about, okay? Because this was what I call a good old school fashion great conversation about reality when it comes to financial literacy and just your basic everything things that like i said we sometimes take for granted because you know i'm in my 50s so these are things that we were we were brought up with because th those technology that we have today was not available but having lakel around she has done a phenomenal job and is still out here trying to teach you young people what you need to know about your everyday survival and basic financial literacy. So reach out to her if you have any questions. She is more than welcome to be there for you and help you prepare yourself for your future.
And again, like I said, like hell, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kim. It You're has been a pleasure to be on your show again. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for the and for the rest of you all, like I said, um, we are here on the office corner. If you would like to be a guest, all you need to do is reach out to me by sending me a, a short bio. I'd like to see a, a picture of the book cover and, of course, a professional picture of yourself. Reach out to me and uh, if you'd like to be on the show. And also, if you're interested in sponsorship, reach out to me and so we can get you connected with Source Nation so you can uh, sponsor for this awesome, amazing program that we have here every Friday night. But until the next time, you all enjoy the rest of your evening and we will see you soon. Good night. You. Good you're night. welcome. Good night.